Let's do this time. Yeah. Okay, setting up your, there's, that was the extra step that they threw in. Oh, we should be live. Hello, everybody. Um, this is Cindy with the Quantum Alignment Show, and I want to welcome everyone. I want to just, today's, we have a guest host, Elaine, and she's going to be talking about the secrets for an audacious empath or gutsy empath. Let me just tell you a little bit about Elaine. She's a mystical, highly sensitive, empathic healer and a projector in human design. She, so she tends to know a lot about other people and not so much about herself. So she had to change that to keep her sanity and health. And she's noticed the same tendency in other empathic people who put others first without understanding that they may not have the time or energy for just one more task. For an empath who's hardwired to serve, it's hard to know when enough is enough. And call it quits or set boundaries. So as empaths in business, some of her clients and highly sensitive empathic healers often sell themselves short, not, not charging enough <clears throat> for their offerings and discounting or giving free services to a person with good hard luck story. It's hard to know when your value, when the bulk of your service is invisible. So driven to find a cure, driven to find a cure she spent decades for psoriasis, decades studying into Eastern Western energy therapies and the divination arts. I mean, I was looking at Elaine's list of qualifications and oh my goodness, we that would take our whole hour. But <laughs> she's a Reiki <laughs> master, an iridologist, a licensed massage therapist, a Brima practitioner, health coach training, habit of attraction coach, soul realignment practitioner, an astro numerology practitioner, a human design practitioner, aroma acupoint practitioner, therapeutic touch, certified angel card reader. Like I said, it's going to take a long time. A certain this coach extensive, <laughs> along with her extensive study in mind, body, spirit connection. She's a business manager. And to top it all off, she's also a licensed tax consultant and a tax <laughs> online bookkeeper. So now I just want to welcome Elaine. And I'm going to kind of disappear here because I'm interested to hear about what the secrets are to being an, a gutsy or an audacious empath. Okay, thank you, Cindy. So, yes, I have a lot of certificates to my name. That's all part of this concept of one of the different aspects of playing out being an a empath. So um, I am just going to jump right into, uh, I have some slides for you. So if I can figure out how to share my screen and get my everything to work here, we'll just get started. Can you see my screen? Oh, wait. Um, hold on. You still have to click the share screen. Okay. Yes. I it's trying to co coordinate two things at the same time here. Okay. Now where, where did that go? It's going to come back. Well, I would say that that's part of being, you know, the audacious impact <laughs> having too many, having too many things in there. It's, and it's, you want to make sure yeah. everyone is. So whenever you're ready to share screens, we're, we're excitedly waiting for you. Okay, well, I accidentally closed that. Okay, let's go to that one, and let's go to share screen. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. Okay. You are now, sharing screen. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I originally started out with the title of a gutsy empath, but it, it just didn't have quite the same, I don't know, feeling that like an audacious empath is. It's like an audacious empath is, and a gutsy empath is somebody who, who can just get past the limitations of whatever is going on in their life and whatever the gifts and talents that we have been given have, 
you know, they, they kind of like can be limitations to us, but, you know, is to get past that and actually live our life using these special empathic gifts that we have been given to their fullest use and their fullest benefit. And so it's kind of like to be bold and courageous and confident. It's kind of like the, kind of like the opposite of what I've seen with a lot of empaths. So, uh, so what I want to share with you today is kind of more like an introduction to um, what is your higher purpose with these gifts, these special gifts that you have been given. So, first of all, we are all empaths. To live in a society, to live together in a, in a collective of any sort, we have to have certain abilities to be able to understand and connect and relate with people. And to be able to do that, I mean, to be able to get along and to work together and to, and to build a community so that we can move forward together, there has to be some sort of a connection between people. Now, so we all have that to some degree or another. Now, some people, about 20% of the population has been classified as being highly sensitive. And so that means that we're sort of like the, the canary birds, the role models for, you know, showing other people a more uh, conscious way, a more compassionate way of living. And so, but, but there's always a downside to everything. And so it takes us a lot of times we get caught up in the downside. But first of all, before we get into that part, um, there's kind of a sensitivity range that goes with, sensi with being sensitive. So you can be like not very sensitive and maybe only just be sensitive to certain foods or maybe certain frequencies of sound or maybe you can feel when the weather's changing you know, that sort of a sensitivity to all the way over to the other side where you feel everything. I mean, you feel everything on the planet. You feel everybody that everybody's emotions and their feelings and their, and their health. And you feel even what's on the other side that you can't see. And this is all um, works through what neuroscientists have called mirror neurons and See, empaths have been around for ages, for eons. They, you know, there's always been the healers and the people, the shamans and the, and the medicine women and the wise women and the midwives. You know, these people, you know, there's been people who, who know things. They sense things. They feel things. They're connected to the plant, the earth, plants, the earth, animals, the skies, you know, the heavens. Um, but it hasn't been quantified scientifically until just recently. So neuroscientists have come up, they found an area in the brain where there are what they call mirror neurons. And what these mirror neurons do is they allow a person who is seeing another person or uh, even something you see on TV or, or in a book or something, it allows us to feel what that other person is feeling so that we can like understand them. It's what allows us to be able to, we'll say, walk in another person's shoes so that we can understand. And, and rather than being isolated, we can connect with them and we can relate with them and we can maybe help them or we can, or we can come up with ideas and new solutions to, to move things ahead. So it's this, this understanding of other people and their plight and their challenges and their and the good things that that bring us together as a collective you you know as as I, people on the earth and and also allows us to move ahead so it's a very necessary item for the functioning of our society now there's a few people that don't have very many mirror neurons, or maybe they don't have them at all. And they're kind of classified in the sociopath, you know, psychopath department, but they're just a very small minority. Thank goodness. But so, um, so this is kind of like the essence of what it is to be an empath. It's like, there's more to life than you can see. And there's, and the thing with an empath is that they have the ability to see beyond what we'll call 
the average person, the other 80% beyond what they can see. So what I'm, who I'm addressing in this particular uh, you know, talk is about the people who are highly sensitive and who are empathic, that, that 20% of the population. So in relation to the rest of the population, the, this group of people is able to take in more information and process it more completely. So we see what's not said, or I should say we hear what's not said. We see what is not shown. We see beyond what is the visible. You know, we can see through illusions. We have, uh, we can see, we can see, hear, and feel other people's feelings. We, whatever is unsaid, we can feel it. And that's. And well, that's, we have a couple maybe, comments on, on Facebook. Okay. Um, Sabrina said, it may also be that empaths are here to help other people understand and work with their emotions and feelings. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, because it goes both ways. You know, we're here to help other people and we got to learn about ourselves too at the same time. And Jan is saying only 20% are empaths because you had that on one of your first slides, that 20% are classified yeah. as empaths. Well, I think that there is, I think that all of us are empaths to some degree, but what we're talking about is uh, Dr. Elaine um, Aaron had come up with this, with a highly sensitive person, and she said that only 20% of the population is classified with this highly, as, as hi being highly sensitive. So in other words, they have a certain set of behaviors that um, classify them, like they, you know, they're, they're, they, they get overwhelmed easily. They avoid crowds. They're, you know, they, um, we're probably getting um, ahead in your speak in your talk. Yeah. right? <laughs> well, no, that's okay. Because, uh, I don't really fully go into this in this particular, uh, in this particular talk. So, but yeah, so what I'm working with and what I've noticed is the people who are, cause I have a lot of friends and I work with people who are actually are highly sensitive. I mean, they get, you know, they, it, it's hard to cope with life because, you know, you've got so much information coming in that you don't know what to do with it. And people say, just get real and just, you know, yeah. So anyway, um, so yeah, that's the, that's really the group that I'm working with. And I've noticed that a lot of people who are highly sensitive also are highly empathic in some degree. But, but as far as being empathic, we are all empathic. We all have those mirror neurons, except for a tiny little portion of the population that doesn't. Oh, Jen, and, Follow-up question. Um, yeah. The veil getting so thin, do you think that the, this percentage that would be highly, more highly, it will increase? I hope so. <laughs> we can use all the help we can get. But, yeah, it, it, you know, I, I'm hoping that maybe, you know, people can awaken more of their empathic abilities because, you know, the, you know we're, we're designed – to be open and receptive and, and compassionate and understanding. And these, I mean, we, this is a, a natural state for us. And we've just kind of, I don't know, life happens. <laughs> we forget about it. So yes, I'm hoping that more and more people who have this ability can also awaken their own personal gifts and, and learn how to use them. So yes, this, I'm gearing this more towards those, that 20%, but really this applies to everyone who, who can, you know, look at a, at a baby and feel, and feel their heart open. And I mean, you know, or look at a plant or look at a beautiful sunset. And, and when every time you do that and you feel your heart open, that's kind of like some of the empathy you're letting in some of the divine light that, that feeds us. So so, yes, I thank you for those comments. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great segue to go into the rest of to, to some more of your, your talk. I bet you you're going to have tools for us. <laughs> well, I got, I got a few cartoons for you first. So, so since we empaths are so caring, we care about people. And, uh, you know, so we tend to overserve and overgive and always be available and always answer the phone, even though we don't want to. I mean, you know, so I thought when I came across this cartoon, I thought it was kind of funny because this is kind of what happens to us. You know, we'll go and 
and we'll we'll start something or we'll or we'll volunteer for something and then all of a sudden everyone else is coming to you asking you for this or for that and pretty soon you're like overloaded overworked and and then it's like uh wait a minute what about you know time off you know what's time off so there's a lot of different kinds of sensitivity and maybe this will help help you understand a little bit jan what what i'm work what, what I'm trying to incorporate here. So there's people, and this is, some, you know, some of this is in your chart and some of this is just something that's from your soul and some of it's something you learn. But there are different people who have an affinity with, we'll say, animals and other people who have a green thumb. They, they know what a plant needs. They know, they can hear the plant saying, I'm thirsty. You know, I mean, I mean, they can, you know, they just, they have a green thumb. They have an affinity with nature or with the earth. You know, they can feel when there's going to be some sort of a disruption in the earth, a volcano or a hurricane or, or whatever, you know, or they can feel the weather changes or they can feel, you know, um, people's emotions or they, or they can sense what's, you know, going to happen or, you know, they can see the patterns of where something is out of place. I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of of expressions of this basic empathic sensitive nature. And each one of them is individual to, you know, you. I mean, you have your own specific areas where you are really, really talented and very uh, adept at interpreting the information you receive from that particular area. So let's take a look at the human design chart for a little bit. Because this is one area where we can kind of get clued into some of what is, uh, some of where your sensitivities are. So let's see if I can get my little point. Oops. Ah, hold on. Let me get this back. Uh oh. <laughs> hold on. I got it. Well, well, well. While you're getting that back, um, Sabrina had mentioned, and this is part, this goes along with what you were saying, different types. She said she she knows she's highly sensitive, and she watched a documentary about someone on trial for murder last week, and it was very oh. difficult because she knew that he and a number of people were not telling the truth. Uh huh. So that's one of the type of sensitivities that you might be. Right. Yeah. You just know. Um, darn it! I don't know how to get my. Thing back. Um, oh, here we go. There. Figuring out my devices here. Any rate, um, okay. So I get my little pointer. So uh, if you're familiar with human design, you'll probably have already heard this, but I'll just kind of go over it again lightly with the with the concept of this is where you are receiving information that is affecting that's that that is affecting how you um, relate to life. You, these are some of your the sensitivities that you you can become aware of. So wherever there is openness in the chart, all these centers and in all these lines, that is where you're receiving information from other people. And, and it, and it, it comes in differently. So like, if you have an open head like this, uh, you'll be think you'll be taking in people's thoughts and their ideas and their worries and their, you know, what, and, and you'll be picking up what they're trying to solve. And so you'll find yourself trying to find answers. And if you, this is where, if you were not aware of it, you know, you can, it can drive you crazy because it's like, you're looking for the answers and you don't know where they are. And, and you don't even know why you're looking for those answers because you aren't sure if those are your ideas or not. So, and then if you come down here, this is Sanders defined, but if you have this open, you know, you'll be looking for certainty and you'll be picking up people's desire for certainty, or you may be, if in this situation, if you're near this person that has certainty, you may, you know, be picking up theirs and think, oh, this is the right way to do it, or this is the right way to do it, or this is the only way to do it. I mean, you know, when you have this open and flex, you're very flexible. And when you have this throat area open, you'll be picking up people's, the things that people 
uh, don't say or maybe don't know about themselves and you'll blurt out something about that they need to know and they might not like it, but it's kind of what happens when you have this area open. It's where you take in the energies. It's sort of like a channeling energy and you take in energies that um, people need and, and you express the energies that people need to hear. So, and it, you know, so what happens with these centers when you have them open, you'll take in that energy and you will re you'll integrate it into yourself and then you'll re-express it. And if this can be really confusing for you, especially when you get down here to the G center or the identity center, this is like who you are and your lovability and how you can, how you move through life and, and what you're going to do, what direction you're going to do to go. And if this is open and uh, you can pick up all sorts of people's ideas. And so one day, you know, you say, I'm going to be a beekeeper and that's what my role in life is. And, you know, and for a little, then a little bit longer time will go by and you'll get together with somebody else and say, Oh no, I'm going to be a master gardener. That's what my role in life is. And then you'll go along for a little while and say, Oh, I'm going to forget the whole thing. And I'm just going to go build a building. And I mean, so that's how your identities can be. You pick up other people's identities and their certainties and you think it's yours and it can drive you absolutely crazy because you don't know who you are and you think you're this and you think you're that and you think you're this, but nothing ever seems to come out right. So I just lost my there. So okay. Elaine, with all, all your qualifications as you're finding it, because I don't <laughs> have your chart right in front of me. Do you have an open G? No, this is actually my chart. Oh, so this is your chart. Oh, well, you yeah. So I do have an open G, but I still go do everything because I've got the gate 48 <laughs> and I've got the gate 56 and 11, which has to do with all these ideas that I've got to solve all these problems for and the open route. So, so yes, I, I know what it's like to be going crazy because you don't know what in the world you're supposed to be doing. And that's one of, you know, that's a big challenge for a lot of us. And it raises a great big question. And because you don't know, then you end up over here the, in the open will and you have to prove. You have to prove yourself. You have to prove you know what you know. And you have to prove that you're worthy of being loved and accepted and respected and, and all those things that we're trying to overcome because as a child when, with our gifts, you know, people said, oh, you're just off in fantasy land and, oh, you know, get real and, oh, quit being so sensitive, quit being such a crybaby and all that stuff. And, you know, we've got to overcome those sort of things as we, that we learned when we're little to cope with so that we fit in. So this is what we do. This is where we bend over backwards to fit in is in our will center to prove that we are, you know, worthy of fitting in and being part of the collective. And, and you know, but even yet, we still don't know what our real place is. So then you get over here where you pick up everybody's feelings and you go into like you, you know, you might be feeling just great. And you go into a room, uh, you know, for a meeting or something. And all of a sudden your legs get tense and you get a little shaky and you get a knot in your stomach and your heart gets tight. And you say, "Uh oh, I think it's time to leave. But, you know, you have to weather the weather the storm because that's part of your job or something. But it's very, very stressful. And then you get over here to where. You pick up everybody's fears. This is the spleen center. You you pick up, you know, you're worried about the future. You're worried about failure, worried about success, worried whether you're good enough, you know, worried whether life has any meaning. I mean, these are all, all fears that live over here that you pick up. And, and you'll pick up people's life force. You know, they might be full of energy and raring to go, and then there you are. Or you might, or they might be exhausted, and then you get around them, and you're just dragging your tail, and you don't know why. And down here with the adrenal energy, you feel like you have to. There's so many things you have to do, and there's just no end, and and you end up like this. So the thing with the open centers is when you understand what it is you're receiving from them, then you will be able to um, 
like address them. You can say, you know, you can let them go. You can let them, you can understand where these things are coming from so that you can, uh, you know, let it go, change, you know, the way you respond to it. But when you don't know, which a lot of times, you know, is budding, uh, when you're just learning about who you are and, and you, you don't, you, when you're coming from not knowing who you are, you know, in, because we live our lives and we don't really understand ourselves, then these things, they can, that they, they, they contribute to feeling overwhelmed and, and powerless and like you're at everybody's beck and call and, and you do everything you possibly can to keep the peace because you heaven forbid, you don't want to have to weather some more emotional storms. And so, I mean, it, you know, these are behaviors that happen with, uh, with empaths. They're kind of, well, they happen with everybody, but in particular people who have um, particularly challenging tra- childhoods that come from, from not being understood as a, not, not having our gifts understood. And we, as children, not understanding what these things are good for, except to get us into trouble. So at any rate, then we go on and, you know, it's like we never get a rest because we're always trying to prove things or do things or whatever. And it's like, okay, we finally need to take a break. Well, Sabrina's I mean, agreeing with you. I'm sorry, on Facebook. Yes. Sabrina, like, agreeing with you. She, a couple of her comments, she said, it can be very accusing. Confusing indeed when there are open centers and you're an empath. And she yes. says, um, she just learned about human design in the last six months and it's amazing, absolutely amazing. She's a mental projector and she can possibly take on so much from other people and she's always proving. And yeah. she also said, you brilliantly explain the psychology of an empath. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've been there and done that. So, <laughs> and I've watched a lot of other people been do that too, you know? So yeah. So it's, it's really common. So you're not alone. So, so after dealing with all this stuff, all you want to do is go find a cave where you can just hide out and, and not have to deal with anybody and not have to deal with anything and just, just, you know, rest and try to figure out who you are. So empaths have big hearts and we care about people. That's kind of like our biggest gift that we have to share. It's the essence of who we are, that we are like constantly broadcasting. And so it makes us a target for people who want to take advantage of us. But it's also the biggest blessing that we can offer people and uplift them. It's just part of who we are. It's just part of our inherent design and we're always there and we're always ready to help and we feel the pain of others and we feel the pain of the world and a lot of times without even knowing it we'll take on the pain of others and shoulder their responsibility and guess what we get sick and we get burnt out and we have health problems and we just you know then we start wondering what in the world is life all about so one of our biggest jobs is we unconsciously transmute other people's energies into a higher vibration. This is all part of this big heart love, you know, coming from a loving place. And, and this in itself is a huge job because it's happening invisibly. And so, you know, we may feel like, why in the world am I so tired when I had a good night's sleep and I've been eating good, but and, and my stress levels are not too high, why am I exhausted? And it, it may simply just be because you are working overtime in another dimension where you can't be seen, uh, where your work it can't be seen, and, you know, busy raising the vibrations of, of the planet and of the people and of our social consciousness, and this is all part of our role. So when we understand this, we can be gentler on ourselves. So what about you? How, you know, are we doomed to live a life where we're perpetually in service and and we don't have any say in the matter? And the answer is uh, no. You have control. You can influence. You can you can leverage how you work with the energies. Uh, these highly sensitive energies, all this information you're taking in, you know, you can, 
you can you can leverage it you can make use of it it does not need to control your life you know you don't need to go run and hide in a cave you can you can learn how to understand who you are and understand how these gifts your particular type of empathy and understand how these gifts are playing out for you in particular and you can understand the coping me- mechanisms that you learned as a child that's that's underlying you know your your coping behaviors now like you know wanting to just avoid crowds we don't want to go to the party you know avoiding a social life things like that you know just because it's too many people too much overwhelm you know you can learn how to understand what's behind that like if I can give a real brief example, just recently I was at a uh, restaurant with some friends and the, and it, it was funny because the restaurant was empty, but everything was reserved. And so the lady took us to a little tiny table in the corner and then, you know, we sat down and, and but it was right by where there was a traffic zone from the bar. And so um, Shortly, you know, friends came and so they were blocking the aisle. Well, pretty quick, you know, the lady was getting really upset about us being there and was giving us anger spears. If you've ever felt an anger spear from somebody, it's like a, they're just like little needles pointing into you. And they, um, you can feel them. You just, you can feel them. So you get really uncomfortable. So at any rate, you know what I, so basically, you know, we, I cleared out of there because it was way too chaotic, too many people, too much noise, and I and most of all, too many v- bad vibes. So I realized that I just, uh, I was working with uh, Dr. Christine Northrop's book about when you come up to a situation, you know, where something is triggered in you, to go back to the earliest time in your childhood when you first noticed that particular feeling. And so I went back and it's like, well, here I was, I felt responsible for all the chaos in my house that was going on in my house when I was just like two or three or four or something like that. So, so you see, these are the things that, that as a child, see, you don't understand what's going on. You just know there's chaos in your house and you, and you come up with a, especially if you have an imagination, you come up with some sort of a reason and you think, well, you're responsible and there we go. So, so these are some of the underlying um, beliefs that can interfere You may feel responsible, and so then it makes you have to go do something or to say yes, or you feel guilty because you're going to let somebody down. So you say yes to something you don't want to do. So see, these are the things that are your your deeper motivations, trying to understand so you can catch them and nip them in the bud before you open your mouth and say yes. So, And then you also need to establish a connection with your soul and understand what it is that your soul really wants to express here, you know, what, what did he come here to experience? And when you understand that and the tools that you have to do that with, then it, I don't know, it makes life easier. And then of course, you know, there's some practices you can do like mindfulness and being grateful. I have a gratitude practice and another practice that I've just been working with. I've been playing with. I love to experiment is about the idea of being. So in other words, like, uh, one of the things, because I've been dealing with health, health is to say, I, you know, you have to envision who, what am I like as a perfectly healthy, happy person, and you know, and what my life would be like, and what my body is like, and all that, and then just say, you know, I am my healthy self, and this is the kick, the tricky part. Say, and my healthy self is me. So you have to bring it in, bring it into yourself. So that's one of the things I've been playing with. I I love to experiment. So we are born as a blank slate, but that's not quite 100% true because we come pre-designed with specific gifts and talents and abilities created so that we can most effectively uh, work through what the soul wants to experience. So what the blank slate is, is how we go about doing this. But we still have, you know, a certain set of tools that we come here. And that's where the the birth charts are kind of like a roadmap that gives us the the breadcrumbs that takes us to, you know, help us follow where we're going. So one of the biggest challenges of uh, a lot of people, and in particular, you know, highly sensitive people and empaths, is this whole concept of self-esteem. And it's 
and it's re relatives of self-love and self-worth and, and self-value. And these seem to be underlying so many of the behaviors that we are afraid to do. And they also underlie the the, the behaviors that, that empower us too. But like, you know, like so it's really hard to set a boundary. You know, why? Well, because I don't feel like I could, I'm really worth um, – uh, having my opinion heard, it, you know, it's like, if you don't want to go to the restaurant to have dinner, you know, how do you set the boundary? I mean, you know, do you say no, and then worry about how that person is going to respond and feel guilty because you're letting them down and, oh, you know, this is a good one for empaths because we understand another person so much. And you know that that person eats better and digests his food better if you go to the restaurant but for you to go to the restaurant it's stressful so i mean do you sacrifice yourself and go to the restaurant for the good of the other person or do you take care of yourself these are huge questions that we're always being faced and underlying all of this is how we feel about ourselves if we love ourselves if we respect ourselves if we appreciate ourselves if we if we value ourselves and that's a big challenge for us to step into and walk in our value and say, I am valuable just as I am, especially since so many people can't see all the work that we're doing invisibly. And they just look at us at the surface and say, oh, well, you know, you're not doing anything. You shouldn't be tired. It's like, yeah, well, you don't understand half the picture. So with that being said, I want to invite you to define your own destiny and to tap into your own inner powers, you know, and your empathic abilities and, and use them as the, for the tool that they are to help you uh, manifest and, and live out the soul experience that, you know, you came here to, to do, to be, to live. And, you know, to dream for yourself a new life, to dream into the world, a new world. And, you know, one of the biggest tasks of an empath. This is one of, you know, because of the way we are wired as being heartfelt people, compassionate, caring, kind, generous, you know, loving, I mean, respectful, you know, sensitive, uh, connected to everything. These are kind of like our, our, our strengths. And this is what we are here to role model and to help birth into our new, you know, this new sense of being a way of being into our world so we have a world that is built a little bit more on compassion and caring and nurturing and supporting each other as opposed to just what's the bottom line and and you know what's the you know how much profit are we going to make i mean that model is starting to uh, dissolve and it's slowly moving into more of a divine feminine model which the empath fits into because the, the divine feminine is a sensitive, caring, and nurturing sort of energy. So I'd love to be your companion and, uh, you know, on this journey with you. And um, you can go to my website. It's elainec.com and learn more about what I, you know, my, what I have to offer. And, and you can sign up for a bunch of free video resources. I do astro, astro numerology and, and soul realignment work and and these are like and and the human design work and these are all like 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 the little breadcrumbs that help help you understand who you are and where you're going and then you know we're all here to bring in a wonderful new world so i invite you to join with me and let's all work together oh what a wonderful thing to say um again on facebook we've had some comments do you want to Stop sharing your screen. Oh, there you are. Yay. Yes. Um, so we did have some questions on Facebook. Sure. Or actually some comments. Sabrina, again, uh, the, the mental projector empath said, this is also true. It's a very difficult role to have. And yet this is truly why we are here. And it was a brilliant yeah. presentation, Elaine. And yeah. lastly... Van Winkle said, thank you for your thoughts. She's a reflector. And it's uh -huh. always a shock to her when I go out in public and feel all the flying energy. Mm -hmm. So we have some time before. So I'm going to invite people if they have more questions. What type of, I mean, 
Now, I, I'm, I remember your chart. I mean, you're a mental, you have a lot below that is open. So are there, yeah. when you look at a chart or when you look at the solar realignment, are there specific, I mean, obviously as an empath, you would know, like I have an open, completely open G, an open emotional solar plexus and an open will. Now, so I would imagine, I'm imagining or that I can see that I would feel other people's feelings. And when you had mentioned that, you know, mm -hmm. I can change my, I am very quickly. Do you do that? Well, I can. Yes. Yes. Um, but is there ways that people, if they're looking at their human design chart, if they're not really sure, like with your amount of openness, you must have many different em empathic skills. I mean, are there, different yeah. things that with different parts of the chart that people could see? Well, um, yeah, because I think that, uh, well, intuition is part of the sensitivity. So if you look at, let's see if I can explain this. So, you know, okay, you've got this band work, uh, work, work of sensitivity, this range. And sensitivity includes, I mean, our bodies are always receiving information. I mean, you know, they, they feel the air pressure, they feel the gravity, they, and, you know, our, I mean, our brains have always got some sort of, of, there's a constant feedback going on, you know, in our bodies. That's what, that's how it maintains homeostasis. And so, so we are, we're already naturally wired to be sensitive. We have, you know, nerve endings in our fingers and, and, you know, our lips and our tongues are highly, got a whole bunch of nerve endings in them. Um, so we're we're consciously able to to feel things and 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 sense things. We've got our five senses, and so you know some people they they do things to some people. The way they deal with with receiving information is they block it off somehow. You know they may they may smoke. You know that kind of dumbs a bunch of of the nerves. Uh, you know in the physical sense. And on, and on a spiritual sense, it kind of puts up a smoke screen so we don't have to see what's going on in the real world. And, you know, some people just flat out deny, I don't feel that, you know, and because it's so funny to ask people. And what I invite all of you to do is now to pay more attention when you're engaged with other people and watch them, especially, you know, your projectors are really good at this. Um, but, you know, to watch them because you'll ask them a question. Oh, you know, how was the, how was the dinner or what, how did that meeting go? Oh, just fine. You know, and, and it's like, they don't tell you any of the stuff that went on. They don't tell you the feelings that they felt that they, they felt humiliated or they, or they, uh, you know, felt like they were intimidated, you know, but, but as empaths, we pick that up. We may or may not say anything about it, but we sense it. And we may, and, and the thing is, it took me years and years and years to understand what I was feeling in my body. So, and, and, and this may be the case for many people who are empathic and they, and, you know, that are not the 20% that are part of the other 80%. The ones that are the 20%, they feel things and they know that they're feeling things. The other 80%, I, you know, it's, I'm playing with this idea, and I don't know if it's 100% true or not, that they do feel things, but they don't know what it means, and they don't know how to interpret it. So they just say, oh, I don't feel anything. Or maybe they'll say, uh, well, I felt this, but that must be the way I feel. I mean, you know, so, so what I'd love to do is bring understanding to this whole concept that, that we are we are energy receiving beings. We're like huge antennas and we are receiving information, a lot of information. And we, and we just have to figure out how to, what it means, how to process it. Well, that leads into Leslie's question. Remember, Leslie is our reflector. Hi, oh, Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine, can you talk a bit about tools you use to help set boundaries? Because a lot of times, as, and I'm, I'm adding to Leslie's question because a lot of time as empaths, we don't, you had mentioned it in your talk, we don't really know how to set boundaries. So do you have some tools that you could recommend? I tell you, it's an ongoing exercise in trying to figure it out because each person's going to be different. But what I've been working on is the first thing, because see, see, the thing is, 
as children, you know, I mean, this is like hardwired into us. So it's an automatic response. So, you know, the because my biggest problem is I have an employee that calls me all the time. Um, and it's like I automatically reach for the phone because one thing I think is my responsibility, you know, because he's taking care of my business. And, you know, secondly, you know, I need to find out what's going on. And thirdly, it's just automatic habit. But I know he's taken my energy. So it's like, okay, yeah. So, you know, we turn off my phone, don't answer it, let it go to voicemail. What I've learned about, because he's a manifesting generator, is his, if, if the answer doesn't come right now, he calls me up. And then if I wait, then I can maybe call him back later on. Oh, I, I got to solve I don't need that. So what I've had to learn with, with setting boundaries, and I tell you, it's going to be different for each person. And each situation is going to bring up something in you that you've got to face, which may not be very much fun, but you have to do it. And, and, and it's like there's some fear usually that has to do with setting a boundary. So maybe it's afraid that, you know, you're, you're afraid of their, the emotional backlash. But underlying that is another fear. Like maybe you're going to be kicked out of the tribe or you're going to be abandoned or, you know, or they're not going to like you anymore and they're not going to do anything for you anymore. So, um, so there's so much that it's, it's so interwoven with so many things that, that go into, that's why each person is very unique and has a specific set and has a specific set of patterns, but getting back to more of a general thing, what you have to do to set a boundary and I'm still practicing this. I'm not an expert, but we're working. We're, we're working our way towards being better at it. And, and that is to say, okay, is this something I want to do right now? And is this, how is this going to affect me right now? And why am I wanting to say yes? And, you know, there's a few little questions. And then, and what am I feeling? That's probably the biggest thing. And the more we learn to respect our bodies and what we are feeling, the easier it will be to say, you know, I, I, I really, I can't do this right now. I need to take a break or I need to do something. Or you don't need to justify it. Here's where it gets into the value, your self-value. And I know we all tend to, I know I have, um, justify why you don't want to do something. So kind of like in, when you're first starting to learn how to set boundaries, you say, well, I can't do it because I have blah, 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 blah to do. And I have all this book work I have to get done. And I have all these things to do. And, and I have this and that, you know, so you justify it. Well, eventually you start cutting that down and just say, no, I think it would be better if I just did do this right now or today. But one, one rule of thumb is when somebody asks you to do something, say, let me check my schedule or let me think about it. And so you have a minute to go or a few minutes or a few hours to go check into with your body. Because the problem with empaths, especially if you have a lot of openness, emotional openness, openness in your head, in G center, uh, root center, when you have a lot of openness going on is when you're in that person's aura, they're going to, you're going to feel their desire to get this done, whatever it is. And, you have to get away. I mean, you know, go to the bathroom or go outside or take a little walk or you've got to get out of their aura so you can sort of like wipe away the cobwebs and say, okay, body, what do you really think about this? And then you can kind of come up with some sort of a, an answer. But it's so, yeah, it's a multi, multi-layered way. It's, it's not just a simple like, oh, well, I don't want to do it. Say no. You know, I mean, Eventually, you might get to that point, but right now, there's sort of a process you have to go through to, to get yourself to that point where you just instantly know. Well, there, and there's that, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, there was, I mean, there's, oh, well, first, I want to, Al said she's having to set boundaries with her big sister. When yeah. I do, she tells me I'm getting defensive, uh huh, which is annoying. <laughs> uh huh, I know. They'll do that and they'll, you know, they'll say, oh, well, you're, you're this or, oh, you're that or, or this, you know, I mean, this one person that, you know, I, my employee that calls me up all the time. I mean, he gets, if I tell him no, he gets really upset and was like, I've had to get, I've, well, I've just had to walk away, you know, and just say, well, that's just the way it is. 
Well, that that's a technique too. I mean, when yeah, you're learning to I walk mean, away, to value yourself enough that I'm sorry, value yourself enough that you walk away. Less yeah. is asking, um, can you define how big is the aura and like diameter? How far? Because one of the tools you're saying is walk away so that you can break okay. the aura connection. How right. far do you have to get away? Well, um, most people's auras are usually like six, maybe eight feet out from themselves, depending on, you know, if they're, you know, I, I mean, under normal circumstances, but an impasse aura tends to be more like 10, 12, 15 feet out. So at, at one of our massage classes that I was at, you know, we were playing this game of, how, you know, walking away to see how far it was until you could, you know, feel or getting it far away and then walking towards the other person and see where you could start feeling their aura. And it was like way across the room. So, you know, empaths have big auras. That's how they, that's how they know so much. They're inter intersecting with so many other people at all simultaneously and with so many other, with the environment and everything that's going on. So. And it's not all in your human design chart. I mean, cause no, yeah. Okay. Cause you're a projector. I'm yeah. a generator. And then yes. Annie here on Facebook is a manifester. Right. And all of us are empaths. Right. I don't, I empaths and, don't know. Uh, uh, there's no one specific type for an empath. Well, Annie is saying she has, she's having to set boundaries with the generator she's working with. Uh huh. And she can't take it all in. And as a manifester, she needs them to slow down, which is so difficult to say in the moment because there's so much energy lost. Right. Yes, uh, that's, a, that's a challenge. And Leslie is going to share the video with her Reflector Facebook group. Oh, so this, thank this you. Excellent. And Elle is saying she didn't know empaths had larger auras. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So this is something else. I mean, I invite all of you to play with this because, I mean, don't just take my word for it. So, you know, when you get, you know, with your family or your, your partner or even you can do this with your, your pets. But just, you know, have a few feet away. I mean, you sort of have to, you can rub your hands together, you know, and then, you know, you can do this where you can kind of feel the energy in your hands, a little tingly or something or pressure or whatever. And then just go, uh, you can do this very innocently too. Um, and then just go, you know, walk up to somebody and just notice when you start feeling a pressure against your hands and, 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 you know, and I don't know if, if you, if you're with someone who's sensitive and then they can do that with you, you know, and we do have the ability to pull in our auras or, or expand them even further. So <laughs> the empaths are really good at manipulating energy. So because, you know, it's like we're chameleons, we can match someone else's, we can take in someone else's energy. This is where the healers come in, the empathic healers, and they can match someone else's energy. And that way you can really connect with them and then consciously raise their vibration out of their pain and into a more of a state of well-being. I mean, these are. That's a conscious thing that you'd have to do there. So oh, that you it don't takes get practice. Yeah, it takes okay, track. Yeah. Um, we have a couple more questions and we're coming up on the hour. So we have okay. two more, three more questions. One just popped on. Lynn here in on our Zoom said, those of us who have bigger auras might need to go further away from them. And uh -huh. I don't always know how big the other person's aura is. Getting my aura out of theirs is important to me and them for clarity and to help diffuse any upset. So that's probably why you recommend going to the bathroom, leaving the room, uh, going out, going out in nature is ideal. Well, yeah. isn't going out into nature one of the ways that's easier to, that you've mentioned to clear? Yeah. Because not only do you have to break the aura content, you might, you might have already taken it in. So, right. um, and right. you, does nature help that? Nature will help that, you know, because I mean, you know, um, you can go out and, and just like if you can get around trees or around wa water is really good. If you can, if, if nothing else works, you know, go take a shower or take a bath. Water works great. And if you add a little prayer when you're taking your shower or you can add a little prayer anytime. 
Um, in fact, I do this quite a bit, and that's just calling in the divine, divine beloved, and 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 asking him to clear me of everyone's uh, energy that you've taken on, or that you've been around, or that you've assimilated and you don't know, and then you know, transmute it to divine life, and then restore you to your highest and most recently upgraded vibration. That's something I do all the time. It doesn't matter where I'm at. But then if you're in the shower, you know, you can, or the bath, you can ask the water, the inner, the spirits of the water to cleanse you and make you pure and whole again. I mean, you know, there's all these little things you can do. Those are very nice tools. Yeah. A couple more questions or comments. Kirsten uh, on Facebook says, I'm a projector and I love being in big groups. It Mm -hmm. seems to be one of the rare times I feel energized. Mm-hmm. I'm one of the few empaths that I know that aren't in, aren't uncomfortable being around people. I've wondered if that's an indication of a lack of sensitivity. Mm-mm. I also wonder if it's it is from having so many life experiences that have made me more accepting. Yeah. No, there are two types of empaths. Basically, there's the extrovert, which does thrive in in outer in, in being with people, and even though they are an empath. You know, they, they're picking up all these feelings and their energies, but I don't know. They just, I don't know. They, they, they've learned how to process it somehow so that it doesn't affect them so much, but they still do need time out. It's just um, they can handle other uh, big social crowds and events and things like that a lot easier than a lot of, like, a lot of other ones who are more introspective and um, introverted. And well, being a remedy. Being a projector that when she says energize, that might be, you know, she's taking up other people's energies, taking up yeah. and that can energize you. Um, yeah. A couple more questions on Facebook. Jane uh, says, Phew, yes, <clears throat> as a sensitive empath, there is so much overload to process and integrate uh-huh. what is mine and what is another's. I tend to hide a lot, but honoring our gifts is important. And she uh, recommended tool bring golden light down over your head with your hands through the whole field give the energy to a stream of transformation deep underground there we go yes grounding is really important so if you can imagine having a, this column of light come down through you and and going into the ground and you growing these deep you like deep tree roots you know that that reach down deep into the earth and grab around the rocks you know that'll help make you more solid too and that, and that helps if you're in crowds and in, in a public situation, you know, to, to ground yourself and, and be solid. Because when you're solid in yourself and you know yourself, it's a lot easier to recognize what is not yours. And you can say, oh, that's not mine. And, and you can stay in your center. But if you're not conscious of that, then you just kind of get all blown all around with, with all the energies you pick up from everybody. Uh, two more questions and then I'll be time. Okay. I want you to, uh, again, mention your website. Uh, Rebecca, well, not a quite. Rebecca had another tool that she used here on okay. that you can ask your aura to compact within two inches of your body to protect yourself. Oh, that's great. I have to try that. Yeah, me too. Um, and then a question Can uh-huh. empaths pick up feelings across the miles? She's a generator with only the sacral and spleen defined. This is Debbie on Facebook. Yes, you can. Especially if, if you're connected with someone, like, like we'll say it's a child or family member or your partner, you can feel, you know, you can feel, well, there's varying degrees again, but you can feel if they're okay or if there's something wrong. You can kind of sense what is going on with them or not. And, um, and this, is, this is a practice that, uh, you can develop if you want um, where you can actually really connect with the person. What I've done is, is you just sort of visualize the person in front of you. I mean, there's, there's what happens automatically and you don't know what's going on, but if you want to consciously connect, it's like Im- imagine the person in front of you and then just let your, let your like maybe you can only just see their face and then just let your uh imagination your energy open and relax and then just see the scene that they're in or feel what it is they're feeling and that's how you can consciously connect but yes we can connect uh it's easiest with with someone we know 
or, you know, or this is, this is part of that mirror neurons thing. If you develop that to the point where you can see a picture of someone, this is how psychics do readings, you know, you see a picture of someone and then you pick up their energy field. You, you, you connect over, over time and space. Well, that's kind of what Sabrina was sharing earlier when she connected with the television show that sometimes you can even when you're seeing on television yeah that you can connect with that um so the last comment and then I want you to get to share your invitation Jane's on Facebook saying contracting in your energy brings it in more closer and denser towards you and she wants I'm I'm paraphrasing again I think she wants people to aware at least for her that this can create more tension well, I can see that because you've compacted everything together. So if you've got a lot of stuff in your aura, I mean, if you picked up a lot of stuff from other people, you know, other emotions and other things, you know, it can, you can really feel that pressure. Whereas if you expand and, and, and let it wash away, then, then contract it, then you probably will, then it really is a, is a protection, a barrier, your turtle shell. A turtle shell. Well, again, you have so many tools in your tool belt that you would be a wonderful companion for empaths to become, because sometimes, as you were mentioning at the beginning of the talk, sometimes as empaths, when you mentioned turtle, just that sometimes we want to hide in our turtle shell, and Mm -hmm. that might not necessarily be what the best thing for the world right now. Mm -hmm. And so would you like to again share your invitation with us as we wrap this up and I will post the link in the comments. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, you're invited if you, you know, if you'd like to explore into yourself, uh, you know, and what your special gifts are and your special talents and how to, you know, how to make the most of them and not let them be a limitation, but actually be a, uh, empowering tool and gift for you. Um, you're invited to my website. It's Elaine C.com. E-L-A-I-N-E-C dot com. And, you know, you can see what I have or contact me or, you know, I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to, you know, invite all of you to expand your abilities and and turn them into tools and gifts. Well, again, thank you, Elaine, for coming in and helping us out as a guest host and sharing your, your knowledge about empaths and how to to actually honor being an empath instead of, and let's just say we can be a catalyst. Yes, exactly. And that's kind of the audacious part that you were mentioning. Yes, that's right. Instead of hiding in our little turtle shell, which one of, most of us want to do, you know, it's like being out there and being boldly who we are. So, well, thank you again. And thank you, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Uh, for attending the Quantum Alignment Show. See yes. you next week. Okay.